get started. I'm Jenny Beth Martin with Tea Party Patriots and co-founder and national coordinator. We're here today because we are opposed to this law. We do not want the government to control our health care. We want to protect our Constitution. This law will fundamentally change the way America works. It's what President Obama promised five days before the election in 2008, and if this law stands, he will achieve that promise. We do not want America to change fundamentally. We like America, we love America, and we want the Constitution to stay intact. The Constitution matters. 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 We have Hadley. Hadley. Hadley Heath from Independent Women's Forum. Hi. Good morning. I'm Hadley Heath with the Independent Women's Forum. This afternoon, the arguments in this case will focus on the expansion of Medicaid that is in Obamacare, also known as the Affordable Care Act. The Medicaid expansion will go up to 133 percent of the federal poverty level, but unfortunately, the Medicaid program is already bankrupt and broken, and it's not serving patients well. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the story of a young man in Maryland who couldn't find a dentist. He was on Medicaid, and because of this, uh, an infection in his tooth spread to his brain and he tragically died. We can do so much better by the poor in our country than the Medicaid program. It's my honor today to introduce Dr. Alita Eck with the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons. Dr. Eck is truly a saint and a patriot. She has great stories to tell us from a free clinic that she runs in New Jersey called the Zarephath Health Center. And uh, our, our message today for you, and I'm sure Dr. Eck will communicate this, is there, there's a better solution than the government solution. The Affordable Care Act is the wrong way to reform health care. And, and I'm so thrilled to introduce Dr. Eck. Thank you. Hi. We run a uh, free clinic in New Jersey, and I don't take Medicaid because Medicaid doesn't pay enough for us to run a practice. So therefore, we have all volunteers, volunteer physicians, and volunteer nurses, and volunteer support staff, and we take care of the poor for free. Oh my we can do it for $13 per patient visit. When the government does it, it's $150 per patient visit. We do it, it costs nothing for the taxpayers. When the government does it, it's $150 for the taxpayers. And when the people on Medicaid can't find a doctor, the Medicaid office actually sends us patients because they know we're there and we'll take care of them. The other thing is when people can't find a doctor on Medicaid, they go to the emergency room and that costs the taxpayers $1,000. Obamacare is going to expand Medicaid, and the taxpayers absolutely can't afford it. Our children can't afford it because we're going to put them into further debt. Therefore, Obamacare is really something that needs to go. It is unconstitutional, and it is something that is going to bankrupt um, the nation. And Medicaid system, which is an expansion of uh, Obamacare, is an expansion of Medicaid, and it's just something that is um, untenable. We can't we can't continue this. The better thing is for physicians to offer free care. They can do it. And what we do need is protection. We need protection from the medical malpractice system, which is strangling the medical profession. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Dr. Eck. I hope uh, you've listened to, to what Dr. Eck has had to say today. Uh, obviously, there are other solutions to, to the problems in our health care system outside of the Affordable Care Act. And I know it's been a pretty negative debate here or around the Supreme Court steps. It's been a lot of shouting matches. And, and this law has divided our country. It's unfortunate, really. I, I would much rather see us come together behind something that truly reforms our health care system. And the only way to do that is to get rid of Obamacare, go back to the drawing board, and do something that truly puts patients and doctors yeah. in, co in control of making their own health care decisions. Thank you. Okay, I'm Catherine Sirks. I am chair and CEO of the Doctor Patient Medical Association. And it's very interesting because our group is dedicated to getting doctors and patients and other medical professionals to work together for freedom and freedom of choice. And what we've seen is this whole push to pit patients versus doctors with this act. And that's exactly what this act does. It makes doctors gatekeepers 
of care, of rationing, instead of allowing them to take care of their patients. Um, it forces doctors in this very uncomfortable situation of being made, forced in these choices that Dr. Eck described, of getting paid $12 for office visits for Medicare, for Medicaid, which is well below the cost of actually being able to provide the care. So what we're learning is that this whole push to get patients into Medicaid, which is the argument today, is backlash. Doctors have told us in our survey that half of the doctors tell us that they will now step out of Medicaid, that they just can't afford to do the government programs anymore. So this is a bait and switch. What we're being told is that everyone's going to have a piece of paper that says they're covered, they have a health plan, or that they're enrolled in Medicaid, except that when they actually go to get medical care, they will not be able to get it. It's the analogy of going to the store where the TVs are advertised for $10 on Black Friday, and you get to the store and they had three TVs for the entire population of 300 million in the country. That's what we're facing here. And I want to stand up and tell you what Dr. Eck and other doctors don't like to say, and that is that the AMA has sold them out in, and by supporting this bill. Doctors by far are in overwhelming opposition, and that is bipartisan opposition from doctors. They feel like they're, what the doctors won't tell you is that they feel like they're hostages in these negotiations. But the problem is that the real pawns are the patients. Because when the bill messes with the doctors, it's messing with patients. It's putting them in straitjackets. For example, the Independent Payment Advisory Board ratchets payments down, will ratchet payments down to doctors so much that it, patients will not be able to get care. So doctors are working in, in fear and they're disheartened and they don't know how to continue if this keeps going. So doctors now refer to it as doom, destruction of our medicine. And that's where the direction we're headed right now. There's 80% pessimism with doctors now, and they will not recommend, according to our survey, they won't even recommend that their children or grandkids go to, to medical school anymore. We need to take the handcuffs off of doctors, allow us to provide charity care, free care, and all the things that doctors can do if they're not constrained by regulations. So we're hoping that this will be overturned so we can get patients actual medical care instead of a, a piece of paper that says they're covered and those hollow promises. Thank you. We have Congressman, Congressman Steve King from Iowa. He was inside the Supreme Court hearings today. He's going to touch on severability. Steve King. Oh, thank you very much, Jenny Beth. Uh, you know, every once in a while in life, you find yourself standing or sitting in the very best place on the planet to be at the time. This is the best place on the planet to be at the time. It's a pivotal component of America's destiny and America's history. And the decision will be made in there as to whether we're going to follow the original understanding and intent and the text of our Constitution, or whether we move into the never-never land of the Constitution being meaningless. And what I think I heard in there today were strong, strong arguments that, it, that the heart of Obamacare is the individual mandate. And the individual mandate, if that is unconstitutional, Constitutional, and I believe it is, and I believe the court will find it unconstitutional. I think they'll understand that if you rip out the heart of Obamacare, it all must fall. That's what I hope happens. That's what I believe defends our Constitution and redirects the course and the ascendancy of American destiny. But in any case, this court will make a decision, and when it's made, the Congress will still have to go back and rip that Obamacare out of the code because it has no business being there as a component of American freedom and liberty. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thank you. Next we have Congressman Louis Gomer from Texas. He's gonna talk about he's gonna talk about severability. He was a judge before he became congressman, so he's an attorney, a judge, a congressman. Congressman Gomer. All right folks, they were taking up severability today. And I, you can understand the Supreme Court's dilemma. They have all of these quotes from this administration saying that if the mandate falls, then the whole bill must fall. They said it over and over. They removed the severability clause 
from the House version of the bill, they said this mandate is so critical to the whole bill working, it has to be part. If it's not part, the bill doesn't work. So imagine the Supreme Court's dilemma. Apparently, they must feel that this administration's word is not good enough. So they're having hearings to see, do you think this administration and all the Democrats that supported the takeover of health care really meant what they said when they said the mandate is the key, it's the heart. If it doesn't stay, the bill can't stay. Why are all these people here? Why are you here? It's because you care about individual liberty. That's right, that's right. And there are those here, and my heart breaks for people on disability that are here thinking if they support Obamacare, it's better for them. The poor people do not realize if this bill stands and it all is implemented in the next few years, the IPAB board will be sitting in judgment saying, wow, these folks on disability are costing us a lot of money. Maybe we need to cut out this, that, or the other. They don't get it that their liberty, their lives are at stake. And I thank you for being here to stand for those that don't even know they need somebody standing for them. So thank you. Let's keep fighting. There has been too much spent, too long, for over 200 years to get us the liberties we've got. As Dennis Miller said, if the founders would go to war over a tax on their breakfast drink, imagine what they would do when their health care choices are going to be taken away by the federal government. Thank you for having that same spirit. Next, we have Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, who is inside the hearings today. She's going to talk about severability. She's made the health care issue one of the most central issues in the country, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny Beth, and thank you for everyone who's made this the importance that it is. You've come here and the Supreme Court justices have given six hours of oral debate to this issue because this is the hinge of history that is turning this week before us. We will make the decision if we're going to remain the country that our founders gave us, a constitutional republic made up of a limited government, or will we, will we be a limit less government where the people give up their sovereignty to a government that has no limits and no control. That's the question before us this week. We saw on Monday the question was, can the Supreme Court even hear this case because this is a tax question? If this is a tax question, then the court is constrained. It could go no further. It can answer no questions until the tax comes into place, and that would be in 2015. The second question was heard yesterday, that of the constitutionality of the individual mandate. In other words, does the court, does the Congress have the right to order Americans simply because they breathe to purchase a product or a service against their will? A very expensive product or service, which many experts say will cost the average family $20,000 a year. And that's when the federal government told us last week, according to the Congressional Budget Office, that over 20 million Americans will no longer have their health care coverage provided through their employer because their employers can't afford this coverage anymore. So the original purpose of this act was to make sure that more Americans would have health care coverage. And we may find out that just as many Americans lose their health care coverage as get health care coverage subsidized by the federal government, thus defeating the purpose of the act. The question today before the court that I just heard when I was privileged to be in the chamber was this. If the Supreme Court finds that the individual mandate is not unconstitutional, does that mean the other parts of the act will fall? And here's the crux of the issue. 
the individual mandate would, would be the funding stream that makes all of the rest of the act work. If the funding stream falls and all the expensive provisions in the act remain, which would be guaranteed issue, community rating, which would be the pre-existing condition um, allowing Americans to stay on uh, health insurance policy until tw age 27, and 2,700 pages worth of uh, different items that are in this bill. If that stays into place, who will pay for it? Who will pay for it? Where will the money come for, to pray for these provisions? We know it was said in the court today that the insurance companies would be forced into bankruptcy. So we would see chaos on an economic uh, spectacle like we have never seen. Interstate commerce would be negatively impacted because you'd see the insurance industries go into bankruptcy. That's the question. And the question this afternoon that the court will take up is the spending clause. Is there any limitation? on Congress when it comes to the spending clause. Now, one thing we also need to keep in mind, this bill has not yet been finished being written. Oh, yes, there was a bill that was signed two years ago last Friday, but that bill has not been finished being written. Over 100,000 pages of regulations have been written just in the last two years alone. And we know there are over 1,200 instances in the bill when it says the secretary shall. What we do know is individual Americans, as employers and as insurance companies, we never will know with certainty what our obligations will be under this bill. Because the great grand bureaucracy that exists across this country will be the ones empowered. Not the people, not the Congress, it's the bureaucracy that has just been empowered. This is an unconstitutional bill. And I believe it must be found unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, but I also believe it is the duty and the obligation of the next President of the United States, one who will stand for the repeal of Obamacare, who will listen to the American people and the next Senate and the next House to, to pass into law the full-scale repeal of this abomination known as Obamacare. Awesome. Thank you very much. There's one state in this country who under, that understands just how serious the debt problem is in this country. All of their congressmen voted against raising the debt ceiling. They understand we can't afford this bill that's going to cost us $1.79 trillion. Right now we have with us Congressman Tim Scott from South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you what, I can hear some friends over there talking about the Constitution, but I wonder if they're talking about this Constitution. The Constitution still matters. The Constitution 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 matters. What else matters? I tell you what, when you think about the fact that the enumerated powers does not make any reference whatsoever to health care, we know that the Constitution matters. The Constitution matters. And what else matters? It matters that Obamacare robs $500 billion from Medicare. That matters. It matters that the Obamacare has $500 billion of new taxes, new taxes on the American people. The American people are on our side, and don't tread on me should be the notion that we live by as it relates to Obamacare. We don't need an individual mandate that requires every single American to do something. That's wrong. It's unconstitutional. We must keep our attention and our focus on the truth. We cannot allow those folks right next door to rewrite the Constitution as if it's some living, breathing, molding document. That's not our Constitution. Our founding fathers understood without any question that what they wrote is what we meant. 
because we stand firm on our Constitution. We stand firm on repealing Obamacare. And I believe that the justices behind us will stand firm and eliminate the individual mandate. And without a severability cause, it's all going to fall. But good day in America. It's a good day in America. Thank you very much.